This video is intended to make it easier to learn how to operate some of the features on your new coach. Please refer to the owner's manual for complete instructions. Due to the many different floor plans and options, your coach may differ from the subjects depicted in this video. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Endeavor by Holiday Rambler. In order to protect your investment, it's important you follow these instructions carefully. I know you're eager to learn all about your new Endeavor, so let's get started. Here's one thing to keep in mind. Most systems within your coach will only operate with the battery cutoff switch turned on. If any feature like the air conditioning, the lights, the entertainment system fails to work properly, check the battery cutoff switch, make sure it's turned on. And before you leave your coach, don't forget to turn off all of your lights and appliances. You can use this switch as a safety measure in case you forgot one in a closet or a bathroom so you don't run your batteries down. To turn the Weldex rear vision system on, push and release the power button. Remember, the battery cutoff switch and the ignition must also be on. The Weldex rear vision system has up to three rear view cameras. The center rear camera has the ability to move up and down so you can see your hitch for hooking up a tow rig or see traffic behind you while traveling. Use the up or down buttons to get what you want. The camera buttons are left, rear, and right. If you want to set the cameras on auto, push any camera button once. In auto mode, the left or right cameras are activated when the turn signal for the corresponding side is selected. The system automatically returns to the rear camera when the signals are off. If you want the rear camera to stay on all the time, even when the turn signals are on, just push the rear camera button once. That puts it in manual mode. You can adjust the volume with the buttons on the right so your spotter can talk to you when you're backing up. The dim button adjusts the brightness of the image on the monitor for different ambient lighting conditions. Push the dim button to cycle through the five different levels and release the button when you find the level best for you. Push and release the menu button to toggle to the AV1 function. This is a video feed from another component such as a GPS system. Push and hold the menu button for three seconds to access the menu features. Push and release to advance to other menu screens while in the menu mode. To select a feature, use the up and down buttons. And to adjust the value of that feature, use the volume plus and minus buttons. The infrared night vision feature is automatic and will allow you to see up to 20 feet in total darkness. Before you move your slide room out, there's a few things you need to consider. Once you've settled on a location, make sure you have enough room for the slide room and the awning above. And don't forget to close the bay doors. Always have your coach at full ride height when moving the slide room in or out. You'll need at least 110 pounds of air pressure to get the coach to full ride height. Move your seat all the way forward. Be sure the ignition key is in the off position and that the parking brake is applied. Press and hold the slide room switch in the out position. The slide room will now be moving. Release the slide switch when the room is fully extended. You'll notice a change in the sound of the motor. You can now level your coach. When leveling your coach with the power gear system, the coach must be parked on a reasonably level surface. The transmission must be in neutral or park. The emergency brake must be engaged. The engine must be running. Turn the leveling system on by pushing the on-off pad on the level control panel. Next, push the auto pad to start automatic leveling. The system will initialize and start leveling in just a few seconds. 
During the leveling process, it's important that there's no movement in the coach. The green power gear light in the center of the control panel will illuminate when the coach is level. Push the on-off pad to turn the system off. If the coach is unable to achieve level due to excess slope, the four orange jack lights and the center green light will blink, retract the jacks, and move to a more level surface. Never lift the wheels off the ground with the leveling jacks. Lifting the wheels off the ground can damage the motorhome. To retract the leveling jacks, the ignition must be on. Turn the system on by pushing the on-off pad. The on-off and jacks down light will be on. Push and release the retract all jacks pad. The jacks down light will go out when the jacks have retracted fully. Push the on-off pad to turn the system off. Visually confirm that the jacks have fully retracted before moving your coach. If the control panel is left on and inactive for four minutes, it will turn off automatically. To reset the system, turn the ignition off and then back on. For manual operation, the same procedures and conditions must exist with these exceptions. Push and hold the man pad for five seconds to engage manual operation mode. The light under the pad will illuminate. Then extend the jacks as needed to level the coach, starting with the front jack. This will help reduce torsion stress from the body of the coach. The amber lights next to the individual jack control pads indicate which pad needs to be pushed. As with auto leveling, the green light in the center will illuminate when the coach is level. When the coach is level, you can turn the system off and turn the ignition off. Retracting the jacks is the same as in auto mode. Push the retract all jacks pad. The weight of the coach on the jacks and the retract springs will retract the jacks. A visual inspection will ensure that the jacks are fully retracted. Make sure there's nothing in the way and that the floor is clean because dirt and grit can damage the floor. Press and hold the switch in the in position. The slide room will slowly move in. To stop the room before it reaches the full in position, simply release the switch. To continue the room movement, push and hold the switch in once again. The motor will change tone when the slide room is fully retracted. You can then release the switch. Remember, never move the coach when the slide room is extended. Always extend slides before leveling and retract slides after retracting the leveling jacks. The Aladdin video system will automatically turn on when the ignition is on and will turn off when the ignition is turned off. To turn the Aladdin video system on when the ignition is off, push up on the toggle switch. Use the toggle switch to navigate through the different selections available. The selection choices are determined by the coach's features and options. Here are some of the functions of the Aladdin. Coach Info. This feature gives you current information about the engine and transmission status. Trip Meter. This gives you a variety of information about trip legs, trip fuel statistics, and engine totals for hours, miles, and fuel consumed. Time alarm functions allows you to set alarms for most of the items we just mentioned. For example, if you want to be reminded about scheduled maintenance, you can set the alarm to let you know when it's due. The idea is for the Aladdin system to monitor various parameters continuously so you don't have to. When an alarm comes on, the system is reset to the main menu and the alarm activation window is displayed. This will indicate the source of the alarm. To disarm the alarm, simply move the joystick controller in any direction. The maintenance scheduler gives you information about when you're due for various maintenance items. Modifying maintenance intervals and resetting miles to go should be done with the ignition on so engine information is available for recording. Refer to the owner's manual for preventative maintenance schedules. System options. The system options is where you set screen and text colors and calibrate the compass. The other items in system options have been preset at the factory and should be left alone. The last item, power down, shuts the system off. The batteries are a crucial part of your electrical system. The health of these batteries directly affects how well your coach performs. A well cared for battery system will give you far more trouble free use of your coach. The deep cycle house batteries are designed to have the majority of their capacity discharged before being recharged. 
it's important they be recharged as soon as possible after being discharged. Your inverter will automatically recharge your batteries as soon as you're plugged into shore power or when you start the generator. If you have the optional solar panels, they'll help greatly in bringing your batteries back to a high state of charge. Solar panels should be cleaned once a month for best results. Check the fluid levels in the batteries at least once a month or more if the batteries are being used heavily. The electrolyte level should be approximately three-eighths of an inch below the well level to allow for expansion when the battery is being charged. If possible, it's important to have some source of power for the coach when it's being stored to keep the batteries charged. If you have a power source, leave the battery disconnect turned on and plug the coach in. This will keep the batteries charged. They should still be checked once a month. If the coach is going to be stored for more than 48 hours without a power source, it's recommended that the battery disconnect switch be turned off. But beware, when you disconnect the batteries, you'll lose the many memory settings within your coach. As we said before, the batteries are the heart of your coach and they must be taken care of properly. If you're going to be dry camping, take care to run your generator often enough to maintain the batteries at a high state of charge for good use and long battery life. Your coach may not have all the features or options covered in these instructions. The instructions for the features you do have will be the same. As we said before, the batteries are the heart of your coach and they must be taken care of properly. Now, let's talk about the inverter, the brains behind the batteries. Although the inverter can do many different things, we'll only cover the basics here. For a more in-depth explanation of what the inverter can do, refer to the inverter chapter in your special features section. The Magnum Inverter Charger has two basic functions, charging the batteries when shore or generator power is available, and inverting 12-volt battery power to 120-volt AC in the absence of shore or generator power. Here are a couple of examples. Let's say you're camped at a campground and are plugged into shore power. The inverter will charge the batteries and keep them charged. Now let's say you found that perfect little spot near a river or lake with no hookups and you don't want to scare the fish with the generator running. But the big game is on and popcorn and cold drinks are called for. Turn the inverter on and set the refrigerator to LP or AU. LP will run the refrigerator on propane gas and AU will automatically select propane when 120 volt is not available. The inverter will not run the refrigerator, but it will run the microwave for that popcorn and the TV and satellite for that big game. Now let's cover some of the other things the inverter can do for you. The inverter remote allows you to program the inverter to handle several different functions, so you don't even have to think about them. For example, if the batteries get hot, the inverter will automatically shut off charging until the temperature returns to normal. This will avoid damaging your batteries. The inverter will also automatically stop charging if the battery's state of charge exceeds the recommended voltage to avoid damage to the batteries. Setting the shore power allows the inverter to monitor power usage to avoid tripping breakers. The inverter monitors AC power, the batteries, and itself. If an abnormal condition exists, the inverter will take action to protect appliances, batteries, and itself from being damaged. If you're not going to be using your coach for more than two days, such as long-term storage, turn off the inverter and plug into shore power. Remember, a coach is not like a car. It has many functions that constantly drain battery power. If you leave your coach without power for more than three days, it may completely drain your batteries, even if nothing in the coach is being used. Here are some things you'll need to know about this unit. On the inverter remote panel, you'll find an inverter on-off button with corresponding status LED, a charge on-off button with corresponding LED, an LCD display, a forward and backward rotary selector knob, a shore button, an AGS button, a meters button, a setup button, and a tech button. To advance through the menus in any given mode, rotate the knob clockwise. To go back, rotate the knob counterclockwise. To make a selection, press and release the knob. The inverter on-off switch turns the inverter function on and off. The green inverter LED illuminates when the inverter switch is turned on. 
The charger on-off switch initiates the charge function when turned on and is indicated by the corresponding LED being illuminated. The soft keys, shore, AGS, meters, setup, and tech are used to access various functions and the rotary knob is used to scroll through and choose the selections. The shore button is used to set the shore power to match what you have at your camp hookup. The selections range from 5 to 50 amps. This lets you set the amount of power you want to receive from the shore power outlet. For example, if your shore power has only 15 amps available, you may want to set the shore power setting to 10 amps. This will ensure that the shore power circuit breaker will not trip if you accidentally try to use more than 15 amps. The AGS button accesses the auto generator start features on the remote. These features allow you to set run times for the generator auto start and stop. You can set the generator to come on when the batteries start getting low to charge them and to turn itself off when they're fully charged. It also lets you set times when the generator won't run, such as quiet times in some RV parks. Another really nice feature is setting the generator to come on at a desired temperature. The setup button accesses the functions for configuring the inverter charger. There are four LEDs on the remote. The power LED is off when no AC power from the inverter, generator, or shore power is detected. If power is detected, then the LED will illuminate green. The fault LED will remain off during normal operation and will illuminate red to indicate conditions other than normal. The charge LED will illuminate green to indicate any of the three charge modes are active. The LED will blink fast to indicate AC voltage is present from shore power or generator and the unit is synchronizing for relay transfer. It will blink slowly when the charger is standing by. The INV LED is green and will blink slowly when in search mode and will come on solid when inverting. When the INV and charge LEDs are both on, the inverter is in standby mode. As an energy saver, the remote will shut down all LED and the LCD display five minutes after the last soft key has been pushed. The system will wake up with any keystroke or change in operational status. It's okay to use the batteries and the inverter to watch movies or use the microwave, just normal evening activities, but be sure to recharge the batteries the next day using the generator or shore power or a popular option, solar panels, the quiet renewable resource. You know, the great thing about solar panels is by the time you even think about recharging the batteries, the solar panels are already doing it. This should get you started with the inverter. For a more detailed explanation of the inverter functions, visit the bonus feature section on this DVD. The 50 amp EMS automatically senses the available power to the motorhome. It determines whether it's connected to a 120 volt 30 amp or 50 amp shore power source or generator power. Depending on available power, it controls the operation of six possible loads, as indicated on the distribution panel. These may be any type of load, but are typically heavier loads, those whose use can be postponed until a time when current is available for their use. For example, if the available power source is 120 volt 30 amp shore power, it attempts to keep the total 120 volt current draw to less than 30 amps. If the generator is running, the EMS will shut down, as it's not needed in this mode. The generator is useful when shore power is not available. With the generator, you can operate anything that operates with 120 volt power within your coach. Your generator operates from the same fuel supply as your engine, so remember to keep an eye on the fuel gauge. Push and hold the generator on-off switch. The generator engine ignition will go into the preheat mode for 2 to 12 seconds, depending on the ambient air temperature. Listen for the generator to crank and run. The switch light will glow solid when the generator is running. Coach power will transfer to the generator in approximately 40 seconds. Generator fuel priming. If you run the main fuel tank below one quarter of a tank, the generator fuel pickup tube will not be able to supply fuel to the generator. It's designed to quit supplying fuel to the generator at about a quarter of a tank, so you won't run out of fuel at your campsite while running the generator. 
Should you inject air into the fuel system, make sure you fill your tank to more than one quarter full and then prime the generator by holding the start switch to the stop position. This will run the fuel pump only, bringing fresh fuel to the engine and forcing any air in the fuel system back into your main tank via the fuel return line. Be sure to shut off air conditioners and other heavy electrical loads prior to starting the generator. Prior to shutting down the generator, turn off all air conditioners and heavy electrical loads for a couple of minutes to allow the generator to cool. If you should need assistance with your generator while on the road, call 1-800-888-6626. You'll be given the phone and location of the nearest Cummins Power Generation Service Center. Before plugging the power cord into the shore hookup, make sure you have the shore power set to the proper setting on the set shore power screen on your inverter, depending on the shore power available. Turn the shore power circuit breaker off plug in and then turn the circuit breaker back on. Connect to cable TV if available and plug in the phone jack. This provides a connection throughout your coach for your phone and computer as well as your optional satellite system. When connecting the motorhome to fresh water, be sure to use a hose labeled for potable water to ensure the hose will not flavor your water. Connect the hose to the city fresh water hookup. The city water valve must be in the open position. Turn on the water supply. When the water starts to come out of the overflow pipe, shut the water supply off as soon as possible. When you plan on staying hooked up to shore water supply, turn off the city water fill valve. This will pressurize your coach water system. It's not necessary to use the water pump when you're connected to city water. Make sure you bleed the air out of all the faucets. The purpose of the gravity fill is to be able to introduce fluids directly into the fresh water tank. This is very useful for the dry camper who can pack and pour bottled water directly into it. Adding antifreeze or winterization and disinfecting the water system is made simpler with the gravity fill. The optional SaniCon system is designed to reduce solid waste to one eighth inch, allowing the discharge line to be smaller and thicker walled. The black water tank drain is for discharging solid wastes. The gray tank drain is for all other liquid drainage. Remove the end cap of the SaniCon system and ensure the sewer hose is properly connected at both ends. You'll want to have the gray tank at least half full to rinse the drain hose. If needed, fill the gray water tank by running water in the shower or sinks. Use the monitor panel to observe tank fluid levels. When the gray tank is half full, stop filling it. Keep the black drain valve closed until you're ready to empty the tanks. When you are ready, open the black drain valve and turn on the switch for the SaniCon. When that tank is empty, flush the black tank by connecting a non-potable hose to the flush system fitting and turning on the water supply. Let it run for at least three minutes. Turn off the water supply and close the black tank valve. Open the gray tank valve to rinse the line. When the gray tank is empty, turn off the SaniCon switch. If you're preparing to travel, close the gray valve. Remember to replace the end cap on the drain hose. The SaniCon system is equipped with a gray water bypass to accommodate continuous drainage of gray water when connected to a sewer system. The comfort control is for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Some points to remember here. First, the 12 volt battery cutoff switch at the entry door must be in the on position. Second, the comfort control must be turned on to operate any heating, ventilation, or air conditioning function. Finally, the coach will not heat or cool any faster by selecting a very high or very low temperature setting. The control, when set to zone one, operates the front roof air conditioner and heat pump, as well as the propane furnace. Set to zone two, it operates the roof air and heat pump in the bedroom. The different functions of the system can be operated by repeatedly depressing the mode button. The fan button controls the roof air conditioner fan speed. Three speeds are available, low, medium, and high. Fan speed control applies to the roof air conditioner's blower speed only. 
Selecting the fan speed auto adjusts the fan speed automatically depending upon temperature set point and actual temperature in a selected zone. The roof air conditioner will use all three blower speeds when auto fan is selected in cool mode. If operating in heat pump mode, only low or high blower speeds will be used. To operate any LP gas appliance, 12 volt power must be available to power circuit boards, igniters, and motors, so the battery cutoff switch must be on. The battery must be fully charged, and the LP valve must be turned on at the tank and at the appliance. Some appliances require 120 volt power. If you're starting an LP or liquid propane appliance for the first time, or if your coach has been in storage for more than a couple of months, it could have air in the lines and the appliances may need to be cycled several times before the LP reaches them to ignite. To expedite this process, turn on a range top burner until it lights. This will bring the LP into the main line more quickly, leaving less air to purge in the branch lines that supply other LP gas appliances. To operate the range top burners, open the valve for the desired burner and rotate the igniter knob clockwise at the left hand side of the stove. Never attempt to ignite more than one burner at a time and never leave the cover down when using the burners. To operate the oven, if so equipped, push in on the oven control knob and rotate it counterclockwise to the pilot on position. Light the pilot located toward the rear of the oven under the broiler. The oven and broiler are now ready for operation. The refrigerator can operate with both AC power and LP gas. To start the refrigerator when plugged into shore power or the generator is running, press and hold the on button until the AC light comes on. Using the mode button, select AC for 120 volt AC power, LP for LP gas operation, or put it on AU for auto. In auto, the refrigerator will select AC power and the LP gas will come on automatically if AC power is lost. To cycle the refrigerator igniter, turn the refrigerator on and wait for about 30 seconds for the automatic igniter to start the refrigerator. If it fails to ignite, no FL will appear in the LED window. Turn it off, then back on again. Repeat this cycle until the refrigerator burner ignites. The gas light on the refrigerator panel will light up when it's ignited. Once the refrigerator is operating, set the temperature with the temp button, with 1 being the warmest setting and 9 being the coldest. To light the furnace, turn on the comfort control in the galley. Use the mode button to set it to furnace, then simply adjust the temperature to where you like it. Use the fan button and set the fan to auto. If the furnace fails to ignite, cycle the furnace on and off a few times to purge the air out of the lines. Do this by turning the switch at the bottom of the control on, let it attempt to light the furnace for about 30 seconds, then turn it back off. The furnace motor will continue running for a two minute cool down period. You don't have to wait for it to shut off while cycling the furnace on and off. You'll hear a small noise when it lights and you'll notice heat starting to come from the vents. The coach is equipped with a water heater that is heated by two different methods, LP gas and 120 volt AC. To operate the water heater, plug in the water heater and turn on the switch at the back of the water heater. Turn the water heater bypass valve to the normal position. Return it to the bypass position when winterizing the hot water system. Purge all the air from the water system. Supply the coach with 120 volt AC power from either the generator or shore power. Turn on the red switch labeled heater 120 volt. Turn on the switch labeled heater 12 volt. This is the gas burner. You'll hear an audible roar from the burner when ignited. The indicator light will illuminate briefly then go out when the water heater is lit. 
the automatic ignition circuit board will make three attempts to light the burner. If the burner does not light by the third attempt, the ignition circuit board will go into lockout. The indicator light will glow steadily when the ignition cycle has gone into lockout. Cycling the on-off switch will reset the ignition board. Note, the heating process works at a quicker rate when using both LP gas and 120 volt AC power at the same time. The front TV can only be viewed while the ignition is off. The TV operates from 120 volt AC power only, which can be provided by shore power, the generator, or the inverter. Viewing time of the front TV from the inverter depends on the state of charge of the house batteries and any additional 12 volt DC lighting systems being used. The coach is also equipped with a television antenna with built in electronics, which uses 12 volt DC to boost signal strength. To raise the antenna, rotate the crank clockwise. To turn the antenna for best reception, pull the outer ring down and rotate. When you're ready to stow, turn it so it lines up with the arrow, then crank it counterclockwise. The motorhome is also equipped with a video selector box, which has six inputs and four outputs. The push button controls allow you to send signals from any one of six different inputs to three TVs and a VCR. The six inputs are an auxiliary input for games or video camera, satellite, TV antenna, VCR, cable TV, and DVD. The four outputs are for the main TV, the VCR for recording, TV2 for the bedroom TV, and a bay TV. The video switch allows for independent viewing of signals at different TVs with a record option from the VCR. To view the television using the antenna or cable TV, turn on the TV. Raise the antenna. Turn on the power for the video selector box and select TV ANT or cable TV on the front TV section of the video selector box. To view a videotape or use the VCR tuner, select the AV input using the source button on the TV remote and select VCR on the main TV section of the selector box. Insert your tape and push play. If you want to watch TV using the VCR tuner, make sure the power button on the selector box is on for best reception. To play a DVD, turn on the front TV. Select the AV input on the TV by pressing the source button on the TV remote. Turn on the DVD receiver and press the DVD CD button on the DVD remote until DVD CD appears on the DVD display. Put the DVD in the tray and push the play button. The optional satellite system is a self-contained stationary automatic satellite TV system. The track vision automatically acquires and tracks satellite signals throughout the continental United States when the motorhome is stationary. The antenna needs to have an unobstructed view of 15 to 75 degrees of the southern sky. To use the satellite system, Turn the power on at the dish controller and the receiver. It may take the dish a couple of minutes to locate the satellite if the coach has been moved since the satellite system was last used. Select the matching input on the TV using the input button on the remote. Select SAT on the selector box. Select SAT on the DVD CD player by pushing SAT on the satellite remote. You're now ready to choose the satellite channel you wish to view. For specific satellite coverage areas and providers, visit KVH online at www.kvh.com. All inputs for the front TV can be viewed on the bedroom TV as well. For TV antenna or cable, select the channel you wish to view and select that input on the selector box. For all other inputs, the same instructions apply as for the front TV, except the bedroom TV must be on channel 3. There can be several ways to operate your system's components depending on options and preferences. For a more complete understanding of your home entertainment system and to fully understand all of its features, we recommend you spend a little time reading your component manuals.
The Eclipse awning requires 12 volt power to operate and is as easy as pushing a button. The battery cutoff switch must be on and the batteries must be charged. Push and hold the extend side of the button. The awning will start to move out. The switch is a momentary switch and will stop the awning movement when released. Release the switch when the awning is fully extended. To retract the awning, push and hold the retract side of the button until the awning is fully retracted and then release the switch. Hi, I'm Chris with Monaco Corporation and I'm here today to give you a few tips on how to wash and wax your coach. Before you wash your coach, remember to rinse it thoroughly. This removes abrasive dirt and road grit. If you wash your coach without rinsing, the effect on the clear coat finish would be similar to scrubbing it with sandpaper. And remember, always start with the roof. Continue rinsing on the sides of the coach. From the top, work down in regular intervals. What car wash should you use? Most car wash products work perfectly well, so brand isn't that important. However, at Monaco, we use Dawn dish soap. It helps remove grease. It is very important to find a soft cloth for washing your coach. Good choices include terry cloth or microfiber pads. Whatever you do, don't use a brush on your paint finish. A brush like this will scratch it. A brush is, however, very useful on the wheels and tires. Wash the coach in the same sequence as you rinsed. Start at the roof and work down. To wash the upper sides of the coach, most people find a washing mitt attached to a pole faster and easier than using a ladder. Never let your washing mitt hit the ground. Even the smallest little grains of sand or grit can seriously damage your coach. If you do happen to drop your washing mitt, immerse it in a pail of water and swirl it around. Work the nap with your fingers to try to dislodge any grit. Then spray it off with a hose. Even with these precautions, there's no assurance that you've removed all the grit. The best thing to do is to just replace it. Waxing your coach helps to protect the finish, as well as help to reduce or even remove small scratches. We find the best tool for waxing a coach is the Porter Cable Random Orbital Polisher with the Lake Country Orange Foam Curved Edge Cutting Pad. The Porter Cable Random Orbital Polisher is particularly suited to the task because its irregular action will not burn the paint's finish. For wax, we recommend McGuire's Quick Detailing Wax. Finish with a microfiber detailing rag. If you have stubborn scratches, use 3M rubbing compound. Squirt a quarter size dollop of wax to get started. Rub it over a two foot square area with the pad before turning on the polisher. Polish the area for about 30 seconds. Repeat in two foot square sections. The random buffing action of the orbital polisher means you can even go over corners and edges without fear of damage to the paint surface. It is important to thoroughly work in the wax on each area you cover, then wipe off any excess. As you can see, caring for your coach's finish is really very simple. All you need is the right tools and basic technique, and your coach's finish will gleam for years to come.
Now that you're the proud owner of a new Holiday Rambler coach, you'll soon be receiving a registration card that entitles you to a free one-year membership in the Holiday Rambler Recreational Vehicle Club. This is one of the leading clubs in the RV industry with over 300 chapters and thousands of members. When you join, you'll be part of the Holiday Rambler family where you can meet the nicest people in the world, people like you. Members camp or travel together and annually unite at national and international rallies. Plus, members enjoy benefits and savings on insurance, emergency road service, car rentals, and more. So return the registration card immediately for your free one-year membership. For more information, email us at hrclub at monacohr.com or call toll-free at 877-702-702. 5415 or log on to our website at www.hrrvc.org. We've just covered some of the most asked about features on your new Endeavor. If you still have further questions about how your coach operates, refer to your owner's manual or consult your dealer. And thank you very much from Holiday Rambler. All of the video in this presentation was taped in Western Oregon and along the Oregon coast, not far from Holiday Rambler facilities. Special thanks to the folks at Salmon Harbor RV Park in Winchester Bay and Lane County Park's Richardson Campground and Marina near Eugene for their assistance and hospitality.